Yo, what is going on guys, Water Gaming here and welcome to a brand new episode of The Rise of TNA. And today for you we have the go home show for the Against All Odds pay-per-view. Uh, we are at... where are we? We are at the Southern Centre in the Tri-State region. Uh, so just over 7,000 capacity, so yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay then, so we start with three dark matches, pretty much as always. Uh, so in the first one, Mark Briscoe defeats Drew Galloway uh, with a cutthroat suplex at 64C. Right, what was penalised for? Holding back, not dealing with the pressure of going all out. Even though he got a bonus for going all out. How's that work? Uh, inconsistency, chemistry. Hmm. Huh. Okay. Next one. 56 C minus. Madison Rain defeats Caitlin. Okay. Caitlin's improving flying skills as well, which is good. And the final one. Wow. Okay. So. Huh. Kenny King and Tyrus defeat Charlie Haas and Shelton Benjamin in a 73 B minus. That's interesting. No worker improvements. Let's see what. See, that got a lot of penalties as well. That's interesting. Obviously, you've got the tag experience and chemistry of Haas and Benjamin. But, yeah, wasn't expecting that to get such a good rating. So. Let's get on with the actual show then. So 55C minus to start with. So the show opens by showing highlights of last week's show before the cameras turn to Mike Tanay and Taz. Tanay says, hello everyone and welcome to Impact Wrestling. I'm Mike Tanay, next to me is Taz and you'll notice that there's no JR tonight. Taz then says, yeah, last week JR received a minor concussion thanks to a vicious DDT from Drew Galloway. Just here in front of the announce desk. And Tanae says, also last week, General Manager Desmond Wolf was kidnapped by James Storm and the Revolution after granting Samoa Joe a match against, uh, against all odds against the Revolution's Loki. And then Taz says, God only knows what they're doing to Desmond Wolf, where they've taken Mike. So, yes. Good gimmick. Mike Tanae penalized for Pogan. Isn't he like an announcer? That's his gimmick or something? I can't remember. Anyway, moving on. And that's not great. that's not great. So the revolution make their way down to the ring. James Storm with a sick smile across his face. Storm says, "Welcome everybody to Impact Revolution." In in Desmond Wolf's absence, I've taken it on my, upon myself to run tonight's show, and will continue to do so until Desmond Wolf reappears. My first order of business is to book a little match. So Mojo, get your ass out of here. Joe makes his way out to the top of the ramp where Storm continues. Thomas says, now, I know all you fans want to see Samojo wrestle, right? So Samojo, tonight you'll be in a gauntlet match and will face the Great Sonata, Manic, and Loki. If you win tonight, and that's a big if, then I may think about giving you a shot at Loki's X Division Championship. Oh, and that match is right now. So, yes. So, gauntlet match to start off the show. I'm not sure how this is going to work. Um... Because you can't actually do a gauntlet match, so I've had to put some Mojo in three matches. Um, they're only short matches. Well, the first two are. The second one's quite a long one. It's not very long, it's like 10 minutes or something. Anyway, matches. Jesus Christ! Okay, so <laughs> in a match that had some good action but not much in the way of heat, Samojo defeated the Great Sonata in 5 minutes 52 by pinfall. And that got 73 B minus. So Samojo is improving in performance skills as is the great Sonada. Penalised for Samojo and Sonada holding back and the low announcing quality uh, experience. Okay, so Samojo is celebrating after pinning the great Sonada, however, is attacked from behind by Manic as the Golden match continues. And then we've got 71 C plus. In a match that has some good action but not too many of heat, Samojo defeated Manic in 5 minutes 48 by submission with a Kakina clutch. 
So he wins by submission there, and Manic is improving in performance skills. And the final bit. So Samojo falls into the corner after picking up the win against Manic. Joe looks very fatigued as Loki steps into the ring. Joe gets up and gets in Loki's face when he's jumped behind from behind by James Storm. Right, that's the 62C. Oh, well, isn't that disappointing? Uh, I, I suppose Joe would be getting tired at this point. Oh, they were all about five minutes. So, yeah, he would be getting tired at this point. Uh, so that could have some effect on the on the match. Hmm. So in a match that had some good action but not much of a way of heat, Loki defeated Samoa Joe in, six, in 5 minutes 50 by pinfall with a ghetto stomp. Shouldn't that be Warrior's way? Anyway, following interference from James Storm. Uh, what? Samoa Joe and Loki don't click? That is the biggest load of bollocks I've ever heard in my life. But, okay. So that could have had something to do with the thing anyway, as well. So, Loki celebrates his win over Joe as Storm and Manic and Sonata enter the ring. Storm signals to Manic and Sonata, who grab Joe by the arms and lift him up to Storm's level. Storm says, well Joe, looks like you won't be getting an X Division title shot. Against the odds, things will be exactly the same when you lose and the revolution stand over you victorious. Get him up. Storm throws the mic to the side as Manic and Sonata stand Joe up and Storm hits the last call super kick before the four leave. So that's, uh, yeah. It's disappointing that Storm and Loki, sorry, uh, Joe and Loki have such a low chemistry. Um, so, yeah, that really does suck. Anyway, moving on. So, Bram and Doug Williams are in the middle of the ring ready to face their opponents for tonight. Michael Bennett and Maria Canellis make their way down to the ramp and stop at the bottom. Eddie Edwards then comes down and shakes Bennett's hand before the three step into the ring. Tanae says this should be a great match. Michael Bennett and Eddie Edwards with Maria Canellis versus the British team of Brown and Douglas next on Impact Wrestling. So, yeah. Um, I need to turn Michael Bennett to do the heel. But Eddie Edwards and Maria Canellis are both baby pieces. So need to turn him. So the match itself also got a 54C minus. Um, the match had some good action but not much in the way of heat. Eddie Edwards and Michael Bennett defeated Bram and Doug Williams in 10 minutes, whereas Michael Bennett defeated Doug Williams by pinfall with an awesome coolness. Uh, Bram and Doug Williams don't work well. Well, uh, this was only a one off anyway. Um, uh, no, he turned very recently. Sucks, but we're gonna have to do it. Um, yeah, moving on. So Eddie Edwards, Michael Bennett, and Maria Canales celebrate their win over Brown and Doug Williams as Mike Tanay puts them over on commentary. Tanay says, "What a fantastic victory by Eddie Edwards and Michael Bennett. We could very well be looking at the future of the TNA Tag Team Division right there." So yeah, I'm not actually put one of these segments to turn Bennett. Sucks, but I got 64C, which isn't too bad. So next up, another 64C. Um, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion MVP is shown hanging out backstage with the rest of the Beatdown Clan. Spud polishing MVP's shoes because obviously he got in because he punched Kurt Angle, um, and he's just in there for some comic relief. You know, he's the kind of one that they all push around and stuff. A bit like Spud and EC3. In real life. So MVP says Spud, get off me. Kurt Angle, you got some guts coming in here into the lion's den. I think you should turn around and leave because these cats haven't been fed in a while. Angle says, you know MVP, as much as I'd love to kick every single one of your asses, I've come back here because I want to know something. I want to know if you've actually got anything in between those legs. Tonight's contract signing, how about you prove that you're a man and come out alone? If you're man enough. See you out there, champ. So, yeah, Kurt Angle's basically said, Are you a man? Or, you know, are you a bit of a pussy? Because uh, obviously he's always got these three, well, these two, uh, with him. So, yeah. 
the dirt sheet. Okay. No way for improvements because it's not long enough. But moving on. Yeah, the knockouts matches never. They never really get good ratings, do they? And that was terrible. So. In about, I had solid inning action, but not much in the way. Pete Elkin defeated Angelina Love for the neat defeat. And. Yeah, Angelina Love basically for all the negatives. Uh, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Okay. Um, her worth improvement, so moving on. Girl Kim grabs the mic following her win over Angelina Love and talk and cuts a short promo. She says, Havoc, you may be bigger, you might be stronger, but I have more heart and determination than you'll ever have. This Sunday against the Lords, I will pin you to the map one, two, three, and win the TNA Knockouts Championship. So, yes. Moving on. So Jeremy Borash is talking to a member of staff backstage when he's attacked from behind by Drew Galloway. Galloway quickly hits a feature shot DDT onto the concrete floor before pick, picking Borash back up and power bombing him through a table. Galloway then walks off as if nothing's happened. So, yeah, just to move on there. Drew Galloway storyline, although it didn't do it very well. <laughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, so moving on. Oh, that's a shocker. Why did that? Why did that bomb so badly? Oh, that sucks. So in the match, I had some good action and average heat. Ricochet defeated Jeff Hardy and DJZ in 11 minutes. When Ricochet defeated DJZ in by pinfall with a chocolate rain. And Ricochet wins the TNA television title. Um, so, oh, Hardy was really off his game. That's because he didn't want to lose, I think. Ruby Sky did good work at ringside. Announcing quality versus the match. That sucks. Oh, length. Title prestige. Booking decisions. Match style not meeting the crowd's expectations because it was a high spot match, but with these three it would be. That means the main event's going to suck as well. So moving on. Mike Tanay and Taz hype the main event slot, the contract signing for the World Heavyweight Championship triple threat match against all odds between the champion MVP, the Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle, and the destroyer Lashley. Tanay says, Ladies and gentlemen, later tonight the contract will be on the table, and MVP Kurt Angle and Lashley will be out here to sign it. Taz, will MVP prove himself as a man to Kurt Angle and come out here alone? Taz says, look Mike, MVP doesn't have to prove anything to Kurt Angle, but as a man myself, I don't know about you, but I feel as though MVP has too much pride and that he doesn't want to seem like a coward, so he'll come out alone. Tanane says, be sure to stick around for that viewers, it should be interesting, as we all know with a lot on the line, contract signings never quite seem to go to plan. <sighs> Which they don't. So, moving on... So, just my Tanae and Taz look pretty nice. Okay, moving on. Oh shit. Anyway, uh, yeah, Ricochet attacks Jeff Hardy. That should have been before that. But, uh, the camera's turns to the announce desk when Mike Tanae has some news. He says, Ladies and gentlemen, we've just received a video sent from an anonymous source which seems to show the revolution and general manager Desmond Wolf. Let's take a look. I forgot I even wrote this, to be honest. <laughs> So, a shaky low quality video then plays showing a cabin in the woods. When James Storm and Abyss struggle with Desmond Wolf before Storm super kicks him and Abyss throws him into the cabin. Um, Storm seems to give Abyss some orders before walking off, leaving Abyss alone. And then, seemingly out of nowhere, Abyss is jumped by four masked men and is thrown headfirst into the cabin wall. Obviously, in the last episode, he's got a major concussion, he's out for a year. Um, so yeah, the men then go inside into the cabin and take Wolf before disappearing into the trees. Tanae then says, so still no information as to the whereabouts of Desmond Wolf, and the biggest question now is where are the masked men that attacked Abyss and took the general manager and what is the status of Abyss? Obviously we know that, uh, but I might draw this out actually. Anyway, C minus. Men event's gonna bomb. Really? Oh, fucking Jesus. <laughs> so, the Young Bucks make their way down to the ring to take part in the triple threat match. 
They do the two sweet hand gestures with some fans before sliding into the ring and jumping on the turnbuckles to soak in the cheers. Um, okay, so Nick got penalised for a poor gimmick, but Matt got a good gimmick. Uh, the match uh, that kind of rescued it. Um, 70C plus. Um, in a match, I had some good action, but not much in the way of heat. Matt Jackson defeated Kyle O'Reilly and Jay Briscoe. When Matt Jackson defeated Jay Briscoe with a pinfall, by pinfall with a worst case scenario. So, Matt Jackson is improving in performance skills. Yeah, this show's gonna suck. Um, so, Taz is stood in the middle of the ring for the contract signing for the triple threat match for the. World Heavyweight Championship at Against All Odds. That says, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion MVP. MVP makes his way down to the ring alone, holding his title over his shoulder. MVP takes the mic from Taz and pauses whilst the crowd boo him before he begins to speak. MVP says, earlier tonight, Kurt Angle questioned whether I was a man or a fraud. Just because I rule and a crew doesn't make me any, any less of a man, Angle. But here I am, alone, like I promised. Uh, no work improvements, dirt sheet, yeah, normal stuff. <coughs> oh, pardon me. Um, yes. So, Kurt Angle then makes his way down, keeping his eyes fixed on MVP the whole way, and grabs a mic. Angle says, MVP, I'm impressed, but I didn't need tonight. This Sunday... What? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, this Sunday you're going to have to keep your boys in the back because if you don't, I'm going to kick all your asses and still walk out World Heavyweight Champion. Angle barely has time to finish his sentence before Lashley's music hits and he makes his way out. Lashley doesn't say anything, he just signs the contract, points at the title and sits on the turnbuckle. Taz gestures to MVP and Angle to sign, which Angle does, however MVP seems hesitant. Taz says, P, Angle and Lashley have already signed. You need to do the same to make the match official, or you'll be stripped of the championship for refusing to defend. MVP voices his opinion and then grabs the pen and scribbles his name on the paper. I got 71C plus. He's a bit bad. And the final angle of the night, 64C. So MVP has barely finished scribbling his name on the contract before he launches at Angle, seemingly trying to stab Angle in the eye with a pen. Angle pushes MVP away and flips the table over, which lands up against the turnbuckle, knocking Lashley off. Angle tries to hit the angle slam on MVP, who blocks and hits Angle where it hurts with a low blow. MVP then hits the drive-by kick on Angle, who rolls out the ring. MVP falls back against the table as Lashley slides into the ring. Lashley goes to spear MVP through the table, however Kenny King jumps out of the crowd and pulls MVP to the side, sending Lashley crashing through the table into the turnbuckle. And MVP celebrates as he's helped to the back by King. So, yeah. Um, bit of a sh shitty show towards the end. Uh, that's, that kind of semi main event didn't really go to plan. Uh, but anyway, let's see what the final show rating was. Have I, hang on, have I booked that in for Against All Odds? Yes. So, moving on. Okay, 66C plus. Um, lost its popularity in six regions. Blind, but it increased it in 22, which is more important, I'd say. So, yeah. Should have had that on the show, man. <laughs> Oh, that match, what is it? That match bombed. That did really badly. We did well to scrape that with that, to be honest. But anyway, that's that. Okay then, so we made quite a bit of money in that show, I think. What were we on? 2.8 something? So we made like 300 grand on that show, which is brilliant. Uh, let's see what the match rating was. So Samojo is feeling the effects. Whew. At least he's not injured. Uh, Explosion got a 0.03 on challenge, which was down. Doesn't really matter. But anyway, impact went up to 2.14, which is brilliant. 
Uh, so that's up from last week's, which is great. Um, let's have a look at the history. We'll see what. Um, okay, so the last show was a 72B minor. So what have we done since the last pay per view? TNA Genesis. So I've had 70C plus, 68C plus. 72B minus and a 66C plus. So we've been doing okay. We've been doing okay in, in the. In fact, we've been kind of on the. You know, we've been alternating. You know, southeast for Genesis, Tri State, Southeast, Southeast, Tri State. So, you know, we're, we're moving around a little bit. Um, not too much, but a little bit. Uh, let's see what the decisions we've got. Okay, so just uh, contract extensions for Impact. Um, so two seasons, yeah we'll do two seasons, try 90% of the network, 90% of TNA, advertising revenue, so we go 100 to the network, and um, we'll do the same on this one, MTV. Okay, so one season with MTV. Right, so one season with MTV. Still trying to sign, trying to get Bobby Roode down to a new contract. Um, Ring of Honor are pushing us for Bobby Roode, man. Yeah, um, he, what's he on at the moment? Can you see that? Can you see what he's on? I don't know how you see it. Uh, Bobby Roode, so he's currently on 13 grand a month. Ring of Honor have pushed us to. Uh, to what's he on now? Twenty-five and a half, over twenty-five and a half grand a month. Ring of Honor have actually upped their contract offer, um, and I mean they they really they really want Bobby Roode. Um, I'm actually going to put that to twenty-nine, twenty-five-nine. What are they offering? Twenty-five-eight. Well, nearly twenty-five-nine. Five years. Work all shows. We've got 30% per show. 20% per show. I'm going to change that to pay per view. Uh, and a bon bonus of. Ooh, bring this up a bit. Okay, bring this up to 19 grand. I really like Bobby Roode, so I want him to stay. I think he'd have a great program with Kurt Angle, the world title. Um, yeah, alright. Cool. So hopefully Ring of Honor will stay away this time. He's 38, so he's getting on a bit, but you know, he's a good he's a good worker. Um, so let's have a quick storyline roundup. So the World Heavyweight Championship storyline is 64C. Uh, the X Division which is Joe and Magnus vs. The Revolution, is it? Um, I don't know why Magnus is in there. Why's Magnus in there? I'll probably put him in there and uh, there'll be some reason to it. But anyway, that's at 54C minus. Um, Tag Team Turmoil is at 54C minus as well. Knockout Championship is doing horrible at 51D plus, but there's only been one um, thing. So, oh. So the Jeff Hardy vs Ricochet storyline is doing pretty well with a 59C considering that awful match. Um, and the Drew Galloway storyline apparently doesn't have any heat, uh, which is annoying considering that we've been working quite well on this in the past few episodes. Um, so why would that not have any heat, guys? Do you know? I don't know. Um, but anyway. That is it really for this episode. Um, do a creative meeting. Let's have a look. So franchise players, uh, number one Kurt Angle, number two Jeff Hardy, number three Bobby Roode, number four Samojo, and number five Frankie Kazarian. Uh, the next big things, Nick Jackson and Madison Rain. Hot prospects, Nick Jackson, Jay Lethal, DJ Z, Madison Rain, and Caitlin. Talk the talk, Kurt Angle, Mr. Anderson, James Storm, Bobby Roode. And Jim Ross. 
Showstoppers, Angle, Daniels, Hardy, Kazarian, and Lethal. Um, Ring Generals, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, Christopher Daniels, Doug Williams. Hmm. And Bobby Roode. It's interesting, Doug Williams, isn't that? Who's hot? So, Jay Briscoe, Bobby Fish, Kurt Angle, Mark Briscoe, and Havoc. Hmm, interesting. Who's not? Manic, Jeff Hardy, DJ Z, Angelina Love, and Caitlin. Uh, Caitlin, Love, and DJ Z, we've not really been doing anything with, but Hardy and Manic, I'm surprised, man. I'm surprised. Um, Jeff Hardy, we're going to try and build his thing up. I don't know whether I want to put him in the tag team division or the main event scene. Obviously, he's a main event at the moment, but, you know. Anyway, time declined. So, Christopher Daniels, Charlie Haas, Abyss, Kurt Angle, and Doug Williams. You know, the names you kind of expect. And Hidden Gems. I've never actually looked at this. So, Rob Conway. Do I know him? Seven year stint in WWE. Currently on a paper appearance at New Japan. And he's decent, you know. He's very decent. Was he NWA World Heavyweight Champion? Okay, he's popular in Japan. His popularity could be something to be admired, but the way we do things in TNA is kind of a mix between popularity and skills. So he could be, he could do well for us. Uh, Ken Doan, Ken Doan, Ken Doan, Kenny in the Spirit Squad. <laughs> oh dear. Let's have a look at him. Uh, he's average. He's not great. I think I I'll stay away from him. Uh, Johnny Gagano. I know him. I I've, I've heard the name before. Um, oh, he's decent, you know, in the ring. He's very decent. Good stamina. Good psychology. Good brawling, chain wrestling, mat wrestling, submission aerial and flashness are okay. Mic abilities are okay. Good star quality. Can play heel or a baby face, cool, cocky, wholesome. You know what? He could be pretty decent. I might get him and put him in developmental. How much would he want? For our written deal, 6.5 grand a month. Can we give him a developmental contract? Hmm. Just give him a written deal. I think he could be decent, you know. As a young lion, he's also going to grow. He's, you know, he's kind of in the place where he's going to learn a lot. Garrett Bischoff. I tried to stay away from him in the last day base, and that's why. <laughs> Not very great. Um, obviously, you know, he's only what? Oh, he's 30. Uh, so he probably wouldn't prove much. Danny Duggan. Don't know why, but I know that name. Um, he looks decent as well, you know. I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's that. Um, and that's the end of the episode, really. So it made a good profit in that show. Uh, made a very good profit. We've only got two episodes left on Nivoli. Okay, we've already... Oh. Uh, Nivoli. Extend contract. We've already... Right. So hopefully these three are going to get redone. Um, that's it, really. Look at our size. The Tri-State area were good, Southeast were getting there, Mid-South were also getting there. Uh, we need 65% in 8 regions, so it's going to take a while. Uh, we're pretty over in the UK, to be honest. But, yeah, anyway, that's that, that's the size, that's pretty much everything. Um, so, yeah. Um, that's it for this episode. If you liked the video then obviously please leave a like and let us know what you think of the video in the comment section down below and um, yeah uh, give us some predictions for um, uh, against the odds pay-per-view so the matches that I've got in mind or the matches we've been building towards Jeff Hardy vs Ricochet for the television championship Gail Kim vs Havoc for the knockouts championship um, it'll be a fatal four-way tag team match for the tag team championships between the Young Bucks, 
Red Dragon, the Briscoes, and the, the Revolution. Uh, obviously, it would be the triple threat for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship between MVP, Kurt Angle, and Lashley. And the X Division Championship will be on the line. I'll find some way to put it on the line. Um, that will be Loki versus Samojo, and I might stick like DJV or someone in there to kind of get past the um, the chemistry thing. So yeah, they're the matches that we've got planned. Um, I'm also going to go with Drew Galloway versus somebody, maybe Eric Young, someone like that. Um, and yeah, so I see you in the episode. Thank you very much. Let us know what you think in the comment section, and I will see you in the next episode. Peace. Whitmer storms off, almost knocking the cameraman over as he goes. The crew just says BJ Whitmer there. Samojo versus Whitmer next week. Back to you, Kevin. Oh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> so let's get our boats in for next week. Ring of Honor.